who you know, are suffering and incapable of taking care of themselves. Because right? there, there is a group of homeless people who fall under that category. Okay, let's move on. Ah, well I feel like I answered a lot of this question. Okay. What, uh, what do you think sometimes government does about homelessness? very challenging, right? Um, one of the things about treatment is um, you're not allowed, well, this is complicated and we can discuss this in another point in this course, but you're, you're not allowed to force treatment on a person. So the government, let's say you get, in, let's say you're homeless and you're, let's say, uh, intoxicated on a substance and you commit a crime and you go to court, the judge can order that you need to go to rehab, but they're not going to like force you in there per se unless you're arrested and processed through the criminal system criminal justice system and whatever happens there but yeah there's there's a lot okay Any, anyone else want to share the either the role or lack of role of government also what is the role of the individual as well we could discuss would anyone like to share someone had the hand up over here i thought So again, again, I'll, I'll keep reminding you, I'll, I'll keep the horse over the head repeatedly. Feel free to respond, write down an answer, right? You know, develop your own skill and, and your own thoughts, right? Don't just leave them in your head. Feel free to burn that piece of paper after if you don't want anybody reading it, okay? Not in school though. Yeah, don't burn it in school, thank you, you're reminding me. <laughs> just, I record this stuff and I post it and I don't even think about it these reminders. Don't burn things in school. Do it safely. Okay. You can. Uh, so I think I already mentioned enough about the different views on homelessness that, hey, it's your fault. You should do better. You should take more responsibility. It's not your fault at all. Like something terrible happened to you. And then there's everything in between, right? I'm sure some people, yeah, they just made poor choices repeatedly for whatever reason they couldn't control themselves. And that doesn't necessarily mean poor choices of you know, substance abuse, but let's say getting into consumer debt, now you can't afford to pay your mortgage. Now you can't afford to live somewhere. What do you do then? That's very different than you know, having some sort of trauma in your childhood that you don't wanna deal with. And even that's challenging, right? Like there, there's a very good saying, uh, I think uh, one of the Greek philosophers said this, Hippocrates or something uh, said before you seek to help someone make sure that they want help or that they want not sorry not want help make sure they want to be healed right so let's say you take that personal endeavor because I would another question I would ask is what is the role of individuals like what is your role in solving homelessness or helping to alleviate that personally I don't think we should just leave things to the government right like what can you do and maybe all that is is educating yourself and, and trying to have a broader perspective on what makes what leads people to homelessness. Okay, these slides are definitely way all over. Sorry, I apologize. Uh, anyways, a civic issue or political issue is a topic or subject that people speak about because it affects society as a whole, and often there are multiple opinions on various sides of any given issue. Uh, let me just check something. So you are supposed to make notes from slides six to eight. Uh, I believe this is it. Yeah, six, seven, eight. So the next three slides. So jot down a note or two. Okay, 
So maybe you want to have the key term in yellow, civic issue. You might want to add in brackets to help you understand a civic issue is a political issue. Okay. And you could write beside political slash civic issue, you could say something that affects society as a whole. It affects all of us. Right, so coming back to the idea of homelessness, let's say. You know, let's say even though, and they're having a problem with this kind of everywhere, but I know in Edmonton particularly, even if you have a home and somebody strolling through your neighborhood doesn't have a home somewhere to stay, you know, those problems are still gonna affect us as well in our house. And so there are categories. So there's crime, homelessness, and, uh, you know, say that again? Us. Yeah. And then mental illness, I think you could add in. Mental health issues, right? There are various categories, and they're not always the same, but sometimes they are. Right? Okay. So again, civic slash political issue it is something that affects society as a whole. People can have different opinions about it. Opinions and perspectives. So an opinion is your belief about a particular issue or topic, you know, what you think. So they're personal, they're subjective, formed by our values, knowledge, perspectives. Okay. So, you know, your opinion can change over time depending on how much information and experiences information you you interact with how many experiences you have okay, so your opinion can change your opinion on topics you know in grade nine will change by the time you're in grade 12 will probably rapidly change when you start paying taxes as well uh, <laughs> by the time you're 25 you may think very differently about certain things and then by the time you're 30, 35, 40, your opinions will hopefully mature and develop along with you as you interact and experience more of life and expose yourself to new information. And you know, if you do that continuously over your life, learn new things, interact with new information, try to engage in new experiences, take on different responsibility, you, know, you become what's called a lifelong learner. And maybe at one point in your life, be called wise. Perspective is a viewpoint, an outlook, it's a way of looking at things. And so these two are very similar. Okay, our perspectives are shaped by who we are and our environment. Okay. So I guess this little example here is kind of the best. Your perspective as a grade 9 student on the world I'll just tell you right now, it's very limited. You haven't experienced much outside of a classroom, outside of a school. Right? So every year, a new batch of grade 12s graduates. They get pushed out into the real world and their perspective on things change because now their environment is different as well. Instead of being told what to do between you know, about 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. every day, now it's up to them. What path will they follow? As they go down those paths, their perspective changes, their environment changes. Again, the knowledge that they have, the information that they interact with is changing. So make sure you're jotting down small notes. I will be posting this PowerPoint up on Google Classroom at some point. Okay. Uh, last slide for notes is your worldview is your outlook on life and the world. Right, so again, coming back to that glass half empty, half full, you know, are we focused on what we have or what we lack? Right, and that is your worldview. Right? Your worldview could be more positive, could be more hopeful, ambitious. It could be the opposite as well. Right? Everything's doom and gloom. Everything's gonna go to hell in a handbasket. Nothing has any meaning, and therefore we should just pursue pleasure, you know, typically they refer to that as nihilism. Like, oh, well, the sun's gonna blow up in four billion years, so why should I do anything? Everyone's gonna forget you two to three generations after you die, so why should I care? Right. Is, you know, 
Uh, personally, I think it's more of a coping mechanism. Right? Like while you're here, you, know, you can have an impact. You can have, you can do something good while you're here. Right? So that's your worldview. Your worldview relates to your values, which are your principles or standards of behavior and priorities in life. Okay, so priorities can change in life and they can shift your views on things and your worldview. And so if, you, if you're living a more nihilistic life, maybe you don't prioritize or value yourself. Right, so you refuse to take care of yourself, you know, getting good quality sleep and enough of it. You're nourishing your body with what it needs, whether it's particular foods, experiences, pulling yourself away from things that are harmful, taking responsibility again, being accountable as well. If you make a mistake, you do something wrong, you take accountability for that. Say, you know, this is my fault, it's on me. Um, but over time, hopefully, your priorities in life change, which then shifts your values, which then shifts your perspectives. Okay, we'll move on. Uh, I believe the next couple slides we just have discussion about. So what is political perspective? So who am I, where am I? Okay. So we got four little quadrants here, personal beliefs and values. 